Good morning. Welcome to Spirituality Gone Wild. I am Debbie G. So gorgeous to be here. Happy, beautiful Monday morning, everybody. It's time for a cup of grata. That's with a shot of expression and two squirts of reality. Today I have a, oh my gosh, I have a really great co-squirt. This gentleman coming all the way from Peru, Daniel Gutierrez. Now, here's the thing. I know I'm just meeting Daniel for the first time. And as I'm sitting there, my and, and we're we're just talking right before we get everything moving along. I'm just sitting here going, wow. Wow. I mean, I'm just wowed. Wowed at what he's created in Peru. Wowed at the life that he led before that he went to Peru. And wow at the way that he created a win-win situation and a beautiful situation for anybody that's wanting to go on retreat in Peru. But he's doing it his way in a unique way and a beautiful way. I'm going to let him tell you all about that. But I am going to just share um, a little bit about uh, this incredible young man. He was once a high-powered executive and an in-demand consultant who graced the covers of Latin business, stipend, and color magazines. Daniel Gutierrez realized that there was more to success than a seven-figure earning potential. As president of Primer, a prestigious national leadership organization and advisor to the Department of the White House personnel for the Obama administration, Daniel was a highly regarded and deeply revered leader. Though Daniel was listed as one of the top 100 Hispanics of America, along with Los Angeles Mayor Antonio uh, V, I cannot, I can't even say it, Antonio, uh, Antonio V. Sorry about that, Antonio. But I'll tell you what, I'm just sitting here. I'm already, you guys know who's coming is just somebody who's inc had some incredible experiences. Wow. So let me just skip forward because there's a lot here and I really want to get him on. Mindfulness is a lifelong practice, and Daniel has become known for giving life-altering strategies in as little as 60 seconds. Woo, we're going to have a good day today. When facing extreme pressure, executives go from high-strung to highly productive. Daniel has even turned Wall Street cubicles from a place of stress to paths of serenity. A beloved mentor and sought-after motivational speaker, Daniel was featured in the documentary Luminous World Views as one of 18 world-renowned transformational thought leaders. In November 2018, Daniel appeared as a special guest for renowned teacher uh, Michelle Pascal on one of the biggest stages in the world, Carnegie Hall in, in, the, in New York City. He addressed a sold-out crowd with musical support from Earth, Wind and Fire, Madonna, and Michael Jackson's best musicians. He's also a best-selling author who just released his fifth book, International Best-Selling Radical Mindfulness. Woo! Oh, my. Y'all ready for this? Let's do it. Welcome, Daniel. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Lordy. You come with you come with a lot of words. You've done a lot. <laughs> yeah, my, I, I I've lived a full life. I've lived a full life. Life has been good to me. You think? Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, yeah, like, sure. okay, look, I have to tell you something. Let me just get. I want to. This is what's coming up for me. My dad, uh, Joseph Garcia, was one. He was the senior vice president of a company called Marcy Bloom many, many moons ago. He started off sweeping floors, no college education. You are one of the top 100 Hispanic leaders in the world. Holy cow. I'm just sitting here just like my heart is just so expanded because I, I, I connect the two at the beauty of that perseverance within the Hispanic culture, you know, and the fact that mm -hmm. um, from my world and watching my father obtain goals that people would have normally said impossible, and he did that. And so I also want to commend you for doing some of the same and being a leader in the culture, as well as one of the thought leaders in bringing forward mindfulness teachings, practices, and everything else that you, and, and, I mean, Lord, is there something you don't do? <laughs> Windows. <laughs> Don't you windows. Okay, I'm gonna like everybody mark it down. Daniel does not do windows. I'll do his windows. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> All right. 
I don't even know where to start with you. Okay, so you you were at the White House. You were leading. You were at Carnegie Hall. That was awesome. I mean, dude, tell me about Carnegie Hall. I mean, we'll get into the weirds and the whys, but I got to yeah. know. I mean, come on. Well, uh, I, that was just two years ago, a few days, a few days ago. Uh, two years ago, um, I was invited by Michelle Pascal to open um, at this concert at Carnegie Hall. And it was an amazing opportunity because a few years back, just a, f a few blocks from Carnegie Hall, I had this uh, life change epiphany that whatever I was doing was not the right path. And I remember when I, when I left that world, I was working with the White House. I was president of a very huge organization in New York City. I was managing it from Los Angeles. Life was good. My my speaking career was doing great. You know, uh, absolutely no reason to to walk away, but felt like that was not my path anymore. I literally stopped. I didn't, I didn't take any more White House calls. I didn't do anything. I just stopped. And I remember my colleague saying to me, "Oh my gosh, you're committing career suicide. How could you have worked so hard to become such a strong leader?" To just walk away from it all. How could you do that? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? And I said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it. And so I did. Now, fast forward to Carnegie Hall and I'm standing on stage. I mean, trying to hold my tears back, you know, earth, wind and fire plane. I mean, it's this big deal. And I get to open and Michelle says to me, you're the only person that I trust to get up there without no music, no backup. It's just you and the stage. I mean, I was like petrified because oh I mean, everyone God. else had Earth, Wind, and Fire playing behind them. I but mean, no pressure, music. man. No pressure. You just no pressure, right? No pressure. You're and good. I, You're good to go. Just go, go. I, get, I like I, her actually. I get out on stage. I look out there and I say, a few years back, just a few blocks from here, I changed my entire life. And many of you who are sitting in the audience tonight told me I was crazy, told me I was ruining my life and told me that I was committing a uh, career suicide. I said, I'm standing on one of the biggest stages in the world. I guess I didn't do that bad. <laughs> Damn. And I, and I landed my message, you know, I landed my message. And it was one of those moments where it was like, that redeeming moment to say yeah. that we can have spirituality and business all together that we don't have to be separate people, that we can walk the walk, walk, you know, and still be ourselves in the process. And then there I was in, on the biggest stage in the world and, and going, thank you. Thank you. I was at the confirmation from the universe to say it can be done when you're willing to risk, when you're willing to step into it, it can be done. And that was a moment for me that, that was just beautiful. I've, Two years I've, later, I moved here. <laughs> Two years later, oh, you guys just aren't even going to believe what he has done this time. The man of magic is what I'm feeling. Is you, you just, you are magic. What you do is just magical. Where were you? Where, where did this, where did this all start? Let's just do a short, short background. What, what was your driving force? I mean, where did, where were you? Did you brought up in Southern California? No, I'm actually from a little town called Midlothian, Texas. And so now the, to kind of lay some foundation about what led me to leave my life to come here and, and live this world of spirituality. Uh, at the age of 17, I was a licensed Baptist minister in the state of Texas. Okay. So, okay. So, so at the age of 17, I was already uh, speaking in big churches on radio. Uh, it was a gift. It was something I had, you know, I didn't stay with that. A long time, but I did. I did go to co college and study Hebrew and Greek, and I studied, you know, everything that I, I guess a good minister is supposed to study. Uh, and that, I think that 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 begins my spiritual journey, you know, um, in in recognizing something bigger than myself. Uh, I didn't obviously don't follow a specific religion. Uh, I do. I do. That's not true because I say that my, that my religion is love. You know, that that is that is what I, I pursue. That is what I know. 
That is what I've experienced. Um, and so that, you know, kind of took me on this wild ride I've been on uh, all my life uh, seeking for something more than what I seem to have had. And I shared this last night here in Peru. I was at a, a expat Thanksgiving. And I said, you know, I said, all my life as, as a successful person, I've always seemed to have never had enough. There was never enough. It wasn't enough success, enough prestige, enough nothing. There was just, there was nothing. I said, and here, because I get, I often get asked, how do you know you made the right decision? You know, why would you move from your comfortable life in the U.S. to the third world country? You know, I said, every morning when I get up, I grab my coffee and uh, my dogs. I said, and when I walk my property, I said, my soul smiles. I said, my soul smiles so deeply from inside that I know I'm in the right place. And I'm not seeking anything anymore. I'm not looking for that thing to fill the hole. I'm not looking for that thing to fill my life. I am living it. And every day I look at the mountains around me, you know, Mount Linley and Nuestra and, and, and um, uh, Pacha Tucson and all the beautiful mountains that are around me. And, and I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. And, and that's a beautiful space to be in when you can finally get to that place that buying something, dating someone, having the right career or marrying the right person is not going to fulfill that hole. It's, it's just finding that space in life where you take a deep breath and you realize there's no more struggle. Ooh, can you all just sit with that for a minute? Just imagining getting to a place. So this is a goal for everybody in the entire world, mm -hmm. getting to that place where your breath is all that you're really needing and that there is no more struggle. Extraordinary. I mean, that is a, that's a goal. What I find interesting, because what I was hearing you say is that even though you had all you've had success in, in, in all the terms that we label mm -hmm. success and all of the things that we're taught. This is what you need to do. Yes. But, there, but, but that you were never satisfied. You were always seeking. You were always seeking. And here you are doing the one thing. You did it again. You went you went to the you're, are you crazy factor. I love that. <laughs> So true. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's, is he crazy? Probably. Probably. Oh, Are we all shit? Yeah. Dude, we're all a little nuts. I mean, right? Same thing. Yes, Deborah yeah. Wilson. Absolutely beautiful. Right? Right? I know. You guys, audience, my ma, ah, <laughs> don't you should love him? You could just eat him up. This is <laughs> it, though, because it's the truth. Yes. I don't care where you get in life. It's like always. So, so I do believe like we create these scenarios. You're either going to create one that's going to not be for your best, not necessarily what you're, well, they're all for your best and highest good, aren't they? So it doesn't really matter. Point. It That's doesn't point. really matter. But the choice to, to actually do something as extreme, I mean, first you decide to leave the White House and, and all of the glory that that must have been. God bless you. And then I, I'm the least political person you'll ever meet, by the way. So I haven't got a clue which is my bubble and I love my bubble. It's good. Yeah. Then you went into speaking and going out there and making a difference with your voice, with your, what you're doing. And then you, you're at Carnegie hall and then you get a better idea. I know I'll just <laughs> sell it all. I'm going to Peru. Yeah. Love you, US. It. Love you guys. But I'm going to go. And I know, I know why, because I can feel it. And I know what you're doing. You are, you are providing a space for true um, getting back, remembering who you are. I don't even know another way to put it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, that's what you're providing. But there's, this is even better. So talk to me. You, what'd you do? Go to Peru and go, oh my God, I think I just, I, I want to move here. What happened? Well, I've been coming here, even through all that, I've been bringing groups here. It was a kind of a joke. One day, uh, my database, I said, hey, I'm going to go to Peru. Anybody want to go? 
Uh, and then I went, oh, my gosh, all these people want to go to Peru. I said, now what do I do? I remember my first trip. I was like, I didn't I, I didn't know the hotel system. I didn't know how do you buy Machu Picchu tickets, train tickets. It was it was such a wild ride. But I said, OK, come on. We're going on this day. We're going to go. And I think 20 people came. And so I started making trips to Peru and I always felt like like I belonged here, like there was something here for me. And I, I just didn't know what, I just kept coming back. I kept bringing people here. Eventually I was bringing three groups per year here to Peru. In the midst of all this stuff that I was doing, I was still coming to Peru. And then one, and it's actually on YouTube. I think it was five years ago, five or six years ago. I'm on Machu Picchu. And I, I posted a video where I said, I got a message today. Cause I've been to Machu Picchu like 30 times. Okay. I was, I was, I was sitting there and it says, it's time for you to move here. And I went, oh, hell no. I, I don't know anything about Peru. Um, why would I do that? Why would I do that? You know, why would I do that? You know, and I'm, I'm like, and it says, yeah, yeah. It, it's time for you to open your spiritual center. And I went, okay. So I did this video on YouTube, which is still there. I saw it the other day and I was like, wow, I actually like said it out loud to people all over the world. You know, I'm going yeah. to build a spiritual center in Peru. And, you know, life went on. And I think that what really made it real for me is that when my mother started to die, my mother's passed away about three years ago. But during the process, during the process, um, I just... I was like watching my mother die. And, and I said, what's life all about? If, if I, I was just so hurt by it, I was so devastated by it that, right, um, right. that I said, I'm, mom, you know, before she passed away, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to open a center in your name, Catalina. That's why it's called Catalina. And I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. And, and, and that's exactly what I did. And I said, I'm going to come to Peru of all the places I could have chosen, I love the Himalayas too. I love Nepal. Um, everything just seemed to open up, you know. I mean, when I first saw this, bro, this property's huge. When I first saw right. it, I went, no, 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 no. I can't do that. There's no Looks way. Like you say, you say, dude, you say no and hell no a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I so get that. But yeah, and then what happened? <laughs> well, I remember, I, remember walking, I remember walking on property. The first time I walked on property, I'm looking around and I'm going, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, and I hear my mother talking to me. She's going, yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. It's yours. You should do this. And I'm thinking to myself, and I said this out loud, mom, you're on the other side. Won't even help me win the lottery. It's my money. <laughs> what are you talking about? Right. I mean, I'm just like going crazy. And then I was like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to stay true and I'm going to do a, a ceremony on the property by myself. Okay. I'm like, and I'm going to do the ceremony. I played my flute and I asked the property, is this, am I supposed to be here? And, and the answer was yes. As long as you protect the energy of the land. And I told the lady, I said, okay, um, I'll be back in six months. And she couldn't believe it. She goes, no one, no one keeps the word like that. And, and six months later, I was here. I sold everything wow. in the States. I have nothing, like nothing there. My son's there. I go visit, you know, but there's not like a house I go to. Right, and right. so I came here with three pieces of luggage, nothing, and, and said, Someone said to me, Daniel, do have you ever ran a hotel? Uh-uh. Do you have a degree in hospitality? No. Do you have any idea what you're doing? I said, no. And you're going to make this work? I said, yes. That's right. And to this day, I have a very successful center. Not just because it's, uh, well, obviously, because in COVID, over COVID, we haven't had anybody here. But you know that two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I had the first five Americans travel here the first five Americans in the entire Sacred Valley of Peru, all of Cusco. And people were like, how did you do that? How did you get people to come? I said, I don't buy into your stuff. As soon as those airlines opened up, I told people to come. I'll take care of you here. Don't worry. There's nothing to fear. 
just come. And they did, you know, and, and over the, the last eight months that we've been going through this difficult time, I didn't just sit around. I got to learn there's 12 indigenous communities above PZAC. And I know them all now. I know their presidents. I've eaten with them. I've stayed with them. You know, they're, they're part of my family, you know, and this is the experience that I think people need to see and to realize that whatever you call the four walls of your life, your house, your apartment, it's an illusion. It's not true. It's not life. It's just where you're, you're, that's where you choose to be, but it's not life. Life exists outside of the U S it exists outside of your four walls. And I'm, I'm proving that, you know, I mean, all those people that said that I was crazy, Debbie, now they want to come. Now they're booking, they're booking to come see me. <laughs> Well, I mean, what I love is that you is that you go with the crazy. You go with crazy. crazy. Well, yeah, yeah no, but you're you're that that yummy, good, juicy kind of crazy. <laughs> that we really, you know, there's. I, mean, just, I recognize that because I I understand. <laughs> it, it's oh. just, yeah, you got. I, I agree with you. You got to be a little bit crazy to, to deal with this world. Just a little bit. You know, and some of us are a lot, but some of us are a little bit. <laughs> Seriously, I, I can't even. I, I just want to show everybody really quickly. Um, actually, it's, wait, I want to go. Ah. Oh, you're on my website. I am on your website. and I, ah. oh, look at the video. Here we go, guys. Oh, hold on. I apologize for the... Welcome to Catalina. Big rooms, big rooms. Wow. Look at this. I did it all myself. I did the whole thing. Mm. my land of my world yeah i'm i'm you i okay so what i could what as i'm sitting here who's playing where did you get the flute sounds from locals but well, one of my Is friends it, was playing <laughs> well yeah because i'm sitting here and i don't know about anybody else but i could feel the energy coming through that's there it's it just comes right straight to the heart chakra yeah. And and welcomes and welcomes you to this this sanctuary that you have that you've created. I mean, it's outstanding. So Thank let's you. so the first so the first group came through. What was that like for you to just to be in that moment to watch them as they experience all that you've created, and as they came through their awakening and their remembrances? I I think the. Um, the greatest gift I get is to see the satisfaction uh, and the realization that whatever, however difficult their lives may be back home, that that it's an illusion of something that they carry with them, and they can change that paradigm here and and realize that there's beauty everywhere. Not just not just here, but even where you live, and 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 when they experience Catalina, my animals, you know, my trees. I have seven different kinds of hummingbirds. I mean, uh, it, it's just one of those places that people leave transformed and transmuted. <clears throat> and that's the and that was 
The, the center is called Catalina, el centro de amor, paz, and tranquilidad, which means Catalina, the center of love, peace, and tranquility. And, and, and that's been the goal the whole time, is just to create a space. Because I remember coming to Peru and thinking, well, actually, someone asked me, when's the first time I ever thought about having a retreat center? I was mm -hmm. 17. I was a minister. And I remember thinking, why isn't there a place people can feel love? Why isn't there a place that people can go and not be judged? Why isn't there a place that, that people can really heal? Whatever that means for them, because I don't, I don't, I don't create that. that. The land does that. The mountains do that. The Apus do that. That's not my, that's, that's for them, right? And, and I remember having that thought at the age of 17. And then at the age of 55, I opened this place. So you never give up on your dreams, never. You never know when they're gonna manifest themselves. You never know when it's going to present themselves. And I remember sitting there going, wow, that took a long time. <laughs> but it happened. But it happened. Wow. And you're, and you're a baby. You know, I'm going to be 53. Yeah. This is, I don't know, I, maybe it's just our time right now, you know, or we come from the crazy generation and that's just how this is. Well, you know? I, I just needed some of the crazy to wear off a little bit. <laughs> I, I just I'm I'm just in so much um, admiration right now and so much compersion, you know, for what you've accomplished out here. And I mean, my gratitude is just Thank you. I'm feeling very a lot of gratefulness that you're on this planet. Um, and I love, you know, the show's called Cup of Grata because I love to talk about gratitude and the things in our life. It isn't just about. Uh, something I'm grateful for, but the human being that I'm grateful oh. for. So we know that your beautiful mom, Catalina, was the inspiration behind this retreat. Her energy soars through it. We know that that experience of your mom leaving this earth was one that broke you wide open. Wide yeah, open. Yeah. I, I call that the grief, the gratitude and grief moment is yeah. that yeah, when you look at life and you say, I think it's time that I learn to appreciate life differently, to really see it, to really touch it, to to really, you know, to really touch nature and realize the, the oneness that <clears throat> that we are. I mean, you have you have in Wall Street managed to in 60 seconds turn around the perspectives of human beings that are the highest, some of the highest strung in the world, which tells me something about your energy. I'd like to know who you're grateful for throughout mm -hmm. this process. Like you've been in these spaces and you're able to do this with people. Where does that come from in you? And I know it's a grateful spot. I've always believed that the greatest spiritual teachers that have ever existed came to pain. That, you know, as, as pretty as and, and rosy as my life looks today, uh, there's been a lot of pain. And I've lived on the streets. I've, I've been divorced. I've filed bankruptcy. I've been through everything. There's nothing I haven't been through, sometimes more than once. And I think because of that and because I came through all that, that the gift, and I'm getting teary because the gift is I get to be here. That's my gift for enduring the pain in my life. You know, with all the successes, there was always such great pain behind it all. You know, and all, people only saw the success. They didn't see the pain. I didn't show it, you know. And so <clears throat> I get to walk this beautiful property and it's like, well done. Well done. This is this is your gift. And so I'm very I'm very grateful to be alive because I try to commit suicide so many times and it just never worked. <laughs> I remember waking up going, hell, I can't even do that right. <laughs> you know, it's just a, a very, a very painful existence. Um, 
when mother died, I want to share this because it's important. When mother was um, transitioning, <clears throat> they called me. I was here in Peru, and they called me and said, you need to come home. So I came home, and I remember sending my brothers and sisters out so I could spend time with my mother alone in the hospital. This is when I think life got really sweet for me because when she was passing away, when she was on her hospital bed in the hospital, I couldn't sleep because I was scared that she would fall asleep. And in that moment, I, I just remember being that little boy going, I'm not going to have any parents. You know, what have I done? I should have been here more with my mom. I was feeling guilt. I was feeling pain. And I was just staring at her. It was about two in the morning and I'm staring at her. And then all of a sudden I was, it was weird. It was like, I could feel her heart failing in my own body. I could feel her lungs failing in my own body. And I was going, what's happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why am I feeling this? And then I looked at her again and, and, and it was, she was just light. There was no body. There was no body. It was just light. And I thought, Oh my God, did she die? And then I remember what the monks taught me in the Himalayas, stay present, stay present. And I remember what the, what the, the shamans of the Amazon jungle taught me, stay present, stay present in the Bacos of the Andes. And I said, okay, I'm just going to stay present. I'm going to stay right here in front of this light. And then I looked at my hands and then I was light. And it was just her, the light and me, two souls, two souls together. And she says to me, or it says to me, many lifetimes before we incarnated into this space, you made me a promise. And the promise was that you would be here when I needed you most. You were here. I now release you from this contract. You are free to go. And I remember going, what? Like my whole life, everything that I had experienced, everything that I went through, good and bad, was for that moment. And thank goodness that I was able to stay focused enough to listen. And, she, and that was it. And then the next thing I knew, I remembered, I woke up. That's that moment of freedom, I think. I felt that. All my life, the struggles, the heartache, the pain was for me to experience that moment with my mother, that soul, to, to honor the contract that I had made with her so many lifetimes ago and to be able to be freed from that, freed me to do whatever I wanted to do. That's where my book came from, Radical Mindfulness, that, that I wrote after that. And, you know, I when I think of gratitude, I mean, I really, it sounds trite but i'm just glad to be alive i mean there's many times when i wouldn't have been here this wouldn't have happened i wouldn't have been i wouldn't have experienced life tony bennett once said about uh amy weingart's death when they asked him what would you say to her if she was still here and he said life has a way of showing you how to live it if you just live long enough and I so appreciate that. I'm beginning, if I hadn't lived this long, so deeply that life has a way of showing you how to live it if you just live long enough. And so people give life a chance, live long enough that you wake up one day and go, shit, I got it. <laughs> you know, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I just got uh, emotional. Well, yeah. I want to just actually just sit with you here for a minute. Um, that's literally one of the most beautiful gratitude stories I've ever, ever experienced in my life. I That's true gratefulness. If anybody is curious what being in gratitude looks like, oh, I'm grateful for you <laughs> just because it's just like... I mean, that's it. That's it. If if we could show with anybody without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark. And what I heard you say is stick around long enough so that you can be like, oh, shit. Ah, this is it. I ah, got it. And so that you can feel into feel into what gratefulness living is about. And wow, I just have to I just want to tell you your compassion, your 
ability to be vulnerable and authentic is so heartwarming and so dang refreshing. You know, to just come on here and be real about life. And yeah, it there's some serious stuff that does hit and it does. It tests our every, I think it tests our every ounce of everything in us. I don't know how many times I've sat back and thought like, what the hell am I even doing? Why am I still here exactly? You want to give right. me some insight to that shit? Because I'd really like to know. <laughs> You know, yeah. like really, I mean, I, my arguments with source, I mean, that's the most hilarious ever. <laughs> you right. just can't, I know that you've had them where you sit and you're just like, you know, from the, yeah, you're going to buy the property. Hell no to, you know, holding your, holding your mom. And I, I had an experience with my children's father when he passed away. That's very similar to what you're sharing here. And I'm not going to go into that right now, but I just want to tell you that I, I am there with you as you speak that because I've experienced something like that um, when he passed away. And um, it, there is this moment though of clarity that's a very unselfish moment when you realize why you're actually here. You were here to be there for her at that moment. You fulfilled your contract. It was then released. And you were able to then make decisions based upon your heart and where you were ready to go to next, which is what has led you to this unbelievable retreat center. And excuse me, just a moment. Okay, grab it. <laughs> just grab, 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 grab. I've got, I've got all kinds of. Hey, you guys like that? I mean, I don't know. I think in the three and a half years I have been doing this show. Daniel, I don't. I, I think this is the first time I have ever gotten to the point where I am just literally almost too choked up to speak. <laughs> that just doesn't happen with me. Like I, I just you have struck a heart chord in this on this entire planet today. For anybody who's watching this right now or who is watching the replay, I want. You, I mean, just the heart chord that you struck, and the and if people can just tap into that the the melody and the harmony and the frequency of that chord that you have struck you know you're here to show everybody that there is possibilities endless possibilities and to tap into those endless possibilities let's talk about those so you're are i i i can't even get over the property itself because that's beautiful but let's talk about what what's What's, where are you at here? You're just, you're here present every day. And what's your desires to just at this point for the, for uh, everything that you're doing? What, what's next? Have you thought about I it? Think I, I, I mean, I have, I do have one goal that I, I think about uh, and if the universe provides me the space to do it, then it'll happen. And that is that um, one of the other mountain rangers that I connect with besides the Andes is the Himalayas. And um, I've told my friends in Nepal that I want to come open Catalina, Nepal. Okay. And be part of, of that. Nothing like here, because this is humongous. But my goal, I just want people to come and, and, and experience something different than what I think they 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 experience where they're at now. I, I there's so much pain in our world. There's so much discord. There's so much disconnectedness and 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 numbness. I just open my doors and say, just you don't have to come do anything. Just sit on the lawn. And let the land take care of you. The land will take care of you. That's what that's what it's for, you know. And so, you know, I I obviously will um, in the process of starting a new book and those things to me, Debbie. I mean, it, it's not like it used to be where I felt like I was in a race, you know, to the next thing. Like I told you before. Yeah. I I really I just feel like I have so much to explore still here, you know. Um, there's Peru is so big, you know, South America is so big. Uh, I just, like I said, I wake up every day. I mean, literally every day since October, I 
I dance the Christmas music every morning <laughs> because that's what I feel like doing. You know, I mean, oh my God, <laughs> I, I want to be, I want to just be a fly on that wall. Yeah, I just, I just dance around the house, drinking my coffee, and listening to Christmas music. <laughs> and and I just, I find so much joy in that, you know, so much joy. Um, but I, I think again, going back to what you had asked before, I think some of our great greatest teachers. I don't necessarily say they have to be spiritual, but our greatest teachers uh, have been to hell and back, um, and. And found a way to to uh, to share that, to share that, you know. Um, because if I look back at my career in the business world and in the corporate world, you know, so many people hurting and hiding behind their job or their title or whatever, it, it was just too fake, it, you know. Uh, and I was one of them. I, I tell people I, in my book, I talk. I was no different. Right. I was no different, you know. But um, I don't know if I can answer what's next. I don't, I don't, I'm not thinking about what's next. I'm just thinking about, you know, planting more flowers and, you know. Oh, good. Okay. So what's next? He's going to plant more flowers. I'm not, I'm not opposed to this one yeah. at yeah. all. What I'm yeah. hearing you say is you're, you are, you've slowed down and you're showing everyone that when you slow down, life happens regardless. Yeah. But May as well slow down and enjoy it is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, enjoy it and realize that, you know, Debbie, for me, and I think my friends have told me this. Actually, one of them said, how did you go from the boardroom to Medicine Man? Seriously. And not, and, and not lose a single person. Like, you, you're still as successful as you were before, just in a different way. And I said, well, I didn't plan that. I just followed my heart. I just now grant you that my business acumen, political acumen and all the things that I learned along the way. I mean, today I realized I needed it. I needed it to come to a land I know nothing about and and find, and work my way around to to have a, not only a successful place for you to come to, but to stay here and politically be able to do this, you know, um, because there are a lot of things you have to know about doing business in another country. I'm just blessed that I have those experiences. You know, they're not me anymore, but I come here with a lot of wisdom that allows me to be able to to manage this beautiful property, you know, and, and grow it. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. Live every day, man. Live every day. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. I know people here. I know they don't believe it, you know, but it's true, you know, um, even I, yeah, I have to tell the story. I remember one time I got a call from a, a man, a guy, a kid. I don't know what he was. He was in Chicago, and he said, "I I thought I'd call you." And I said, "Okay." I didn't know him. And he, I said, "What's going on?" He goes, "Well, I'm about to kill myself, and I wanted to talk to one more person." And I said, "Oh, okay. Well, what do you want to know?" <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to yeah. You know, and I said, "Well, I said, can I ask you a question?" He said, "Yeah." I said, why end your life today? What's going on? He, this, this is seriously what he told me. He says, I just can't take it anymore. The pressure's too much. I said, the pressure? I said, but what, there's something on your mind. Tell me. What? I mean, if you're going to do this anyway, it doesn't matter. So just tell me. So, so this is what he says to me. He says, well, I have this electric bill and I can't pay it. I don't have any money. And I just can't pay it anymore and I'm tired. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, they won't quit calling. They call me every five seconds and they want their money and I don't have it, blah, blah, blah. And then I started laughing, and which I, I think kind of made him mad a little bit because I was going, how much is your light bill? He said, $35. And then I really started laughing. And I said, sir, I'm not laughing at you. I just want you to know something. Did you ever think about just disconnecting your phone? <laughs> they weren't ready anymore. I bless I said, you. It wouldn't ring. It wouldn't ring anymore. <laughs> I mean, you could just, I could feel the light bulb go on. I said, it won't ring anymore. That fucking thing will not ring if it's not plugged in, right? <laughs> and it, it just, I could just feel the light come on. And then I said, the $35, can I share something with you from a business perspective? He says, yeah. I said, even if you don't pay it, 
they're going to sell that to a bank and then the bank's going to sell it to someone else and it's going to keep getting sold and they're not even going to think about you about your 35 dollars so why would you want to end your life over 35 dollars unplug your phone and when you can pay it pay it or find a way to pay it forward and be done with it and he, by the time i got done with him, he was laughing so hard because he realized how crazy it was for him to think that the end is life over 35 dollars and over a phone ringing why do i tell you this story nothing's that bad nothing's that bad i've been there nothing's that bad you know and and this too shall pass and, and this crazy world we live in right now, whew, it's crazy, you know, do life crazy. That's all I can tell you is do life crazy. Nothing's that serious. Everything's negotiable. I know people are hurting out there. Everything's negotiable, everything. Do everything. life crazy, do life crazy. Do life crazy. <laughs> Somebody type that in the chat, do life crazy. <laughs> and, and then I want you to type everything's negotiable. Yeah, everything's negotiable. Woo! Rock on. What a badass story. I mean, dude, like, but you know, it's that he, that $35 for him was the cam, but it's like the straw that's breaking the, the camel's back. Yes. You know, it's like it, it and if we could just, so if you could just defuse that thing that you've blown up, you know, the mountain out of a molehill kind of thing, guys, you yeah. know how we all do that. We like to create yeah. our own drama out of, but sometimes it's that one last thing and, and and for a person to be able to for you to go in and diffuse that and help switch you shift perspective you That's shift perspective and when you shift that perspective so be open to seeing the possibility that maybe might there might be another way to look at this hang on a second you are the phone. He almost died Shit. Laughing. I said, unplug, unplug the damn phone, phone. <laughs> all right y'all that's it unplug the phone Daniel's answers to life. Unplug that yeah. shit. Yeah, unplug it. They won't unplug call it. me no more. I promise. They oh, won't call. Ever. <laughs> oh my God, that is beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Okay, so let's just. Uh, what a gorgeous audience, you guys. I love you. I'm glad that my chat's finally coming up. Wendy, I will definitely ask that. Uh, they love the flute. Uh huh. Uh, so I don't know who this is, but it says powerful. Mm hmm. Fuerza, amigo, la luz y del sol. Claro que sí. And I don't know Spanish, whatever it said. Yes. <laughs> it said power, power in the light. Power in the light. Woo! Love that, guys. You know, I did take it in high school, but it just didn't. My dad didn't teach us. It was just, you know, my grandmother had nine kids, and she stopped teaching Spanish at the fifth one, I think it was. It was hilarious. Um, Andrea, thank you. She says it's very powerful to remember that the land will take care of itself. You rock, Andrea. I love you. Have been intentionally trying to explore and comprehend the power of gratitude and appreciation, and I couldn't have asked for a better demonstration. So powerful. Thank you. There it is. It's why we do this. This is why we do this right here, right there, guys, to do that. Beautiful. Amen to you. Yeah, right? Nice to meet. Absolutely. And Saf Buxy over in the UK. Woo. I love you. I'm a proper geezer. <laughs> proper geezer. You're a proper geezer too. In the UK, apparently that, that means something really great, Daniel. So I'm just telling you. All right. Let's talk about your book. And I'm going to actually put up your other website here. Let's talk a little bit about... Uh, danielkateris.com and how people could, can people work with you privately? And also I know that you have a meditation that you're going to offer everybody today, um, as well as your book that is available. And the, let's talk a little bit about the book that you're writing. Yeah, I don't talk a lot about that yet, but I will. Um, well, the book that I'm, I published right before I moved here was Radical Mindfulness. New radical mindfulness will explain the whole story that I gave you brief, but it really talked about, you know, how we can get so wound up, you know, like the guy on the phone with over his phone, yeah, uh, yeah. Over, his, over his light bill, how we can let little things, we just lose control. We lose our mind completely. And, and that book just talks a little bit about that. talks about my, my life, my prior life to here. 
Um, and, and the new book. Well, let me tell you this. And you, and because of the comments that I saw, I'm going to share the story. So when I got here, remember I said that before I moved here, I, I did a ceremony on the land. It's called a despacho ceremony. And I asked the land if this was, I'm supposed to be here. And she said, yes. And I live between uh, Mount Linley and, and Mount Nuestra. Mount Nuestra is female energy. Mount Linley is male energy. I'm literally right in the middle. And my property is up against Mount Linley. Anyway, so when the, pan when the pandemic hit here in Peru, we were in uh, military law here, martial law. So we really weren't allowed to leave our homes. Uh, I didn't see anybody literally for about 40 days. I couldn't leave my house. Uh, I, my employees couldn't come to work. Uh, and for me, that's kind of like, you know, driving me crazy because I have, I like being around people. Yeah. So I was losing my mind here alone. Um, and there was one day, and this is a funny, I won't tell you the whole story, but it was one day. <laughs> Oh, no, I made tell the comment, whole story. I made a comment on Facebook about I was freaking out because I was out of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and someone. All right, that's not someone, supposed to be funny. Yeah, and someone decided to say, you're not very, you're not a very good human because you're killing baby pigs or something like that. I lost it. I mean, the, the, this is live, live on Facebook. I started effing this, effing that. I was so mad. I mean, people were going, Daniel's lost it. And he's on Facebook Live. Right? <laughs> I was so angry. I was oh, so, no. it was, it's like, it's people's favorite Facebook Live of me because I was just losing it. Uh -huh. Right? And, and then after I got done, I thought, oh, that was cool. Why did I do that? Why did I have to go live and do that on Facebook Live? I said, you know what? It's time for me to go inward. So I decided to, to do ceremony here on land again with Pachimama, with, with the land, with the property, and listen to what happened. So the land began to speak to me and said to me, Daniel, when you came here, you asked permission to come and be on this land. And we said, yes. We said, yes, this was for you. But then you moved here and you, you had people doing everything. You had people taking care of the flowers, mowing, but you never stuck your hand in the soul ever again. I want you, this is Mother Nature saying, I want you to treat me the same way you treated your dying mother. I want you to love me that much that every day you put your hands in the soil and feel the land and feel what it has to give you. And when you do that, you won't be sad anymore. You would have understood why you're here. Because this life, who you were in the United States, no longer exists. You must learn to accept who you are now and step into that. Because you're no longer there. You're here. And that day, I literally, it was kind of funny because my dogs were looking at me like I was weird. Here we don't have lawnmowers and it's a big property. So we had this uh, weed eater, weed whacker, whatever you call it. I had to go on YouTube to figure out how to use it. <laughs> and then I had to go on YouTube to figure out how to load it back up and put gas in and everything. But I began to, mow, I mow the property here myself now. I trim the flowers. I don't let my people do that anymore because I really needed to connect with the land in a way that I was part of it, being, being, one with the land. And so my new book is, is called, the working title is called, uh, um, what was it called? Uh, the Agony and Ecstasy of Living Your Dreams. Like, what, is it, what does it really mean to live your dreams? What does it really mean to let go? What does it mean? I mean, when I left the U.S., if you want to know how, how I was told to come here with nothing. So I literally hired I asked my son, I have one son, son, do you want daddy's pictures? Do you want, what do you want? You know, I'm, a, I'm an artist. So I had paintings. I had all kinds of stuff. And uh, the only thing he wanted was a 65 inch TV. Go figure 18 year old. Right. So I gave it to him, you know, yep, and, yep. And, the, and the rest of it we're attached to. So I, 
hired a, a truck to come and shred my entire past pictures, I, you know, of everything, passports, paintings, baby pictures, mother's pictures, everything. Shred the whole thing. I have not, not, no memory, no memories at all gone. And why? Because I felt that in order for me to really get what was here for me, I needed to let go of what was attached. And I can't. And so this next book is about that. It's about that. You know, if you, this is the example that I give people when I'm speaking. If you go buy for a new apartment or new house, mm -hmm. and the first place you go to is the garage to see if all your shit will fit, you're trapped to the past because you're bringing it with you. <laughs> it's like we, we get bigger houses to put more stuff in it. Well, that stuff is just stuff. It's the past. And when we're chained to the past, we can't move forward. We're the only ones attached to that. When my mother passed away, I didn't want her stuff. I wasn't attached to it. And so when I asked my son, you want this stuff? He said, no. I said, great, I'll shred it. Thank God for the iPhone. Took a few pictures. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I want to appreciate what, That's what the yeah. new book's about. Oh, I can't wait. When are you? Okay. I want to get the first one. This one, this well, one coming up. I, I'm loving this. You, I have to, Daniel, I got to tell you something. Something. Well, okay. Like you're telling this story and I'm sitting back going, okay. Uh-huh. I have been in the, we, after Wayne died, after that's the children's dad, after he passed away, our life has been, we've had a lot of upheaval stuff happen. Everything had went, wound up going into storage, right? Recently, I found out that all that stuff is gone. That in, that's all the baby pictures. That's everything. That's everything that I was ever attached to, including right. is that everything. Pew. This is round three or four of me losing everything. But this time, this time, it was everything. Like all that stuff I loved around for, for all my life. Pew attached gone. to gone now this happened back in, in in when i oh this is just insane you guys we're talking about like your children's photos here i mourned it i'm gonna promise you i mourned it for a minute and luckily i had a, a bunch in my phone and i've got a bunch in, in the computer this was great but i sat back and realized that and i asked the universe and i said huh what's going on You've just wiped me of everything that I, every, every attachment and every piece of everything of my life that was before now. And I have this choice, acceptance. Mm -hmm. What if there had been a fire? What about people who lose everything in a fire? What about people, you know, this is not the end of the world here. I'm still here breathing. I yeah. haven't, I haven't faded to, to, to black. I'm not, I'm not going down. I, you guys, I'm just saying, like, think about this is what you just shared is probably one of the most important lessons that I just got in the last three months. And that is, what if it's all gone, guys? What if? What the hell? What then? Are you going to be okay? Are you going to be all right? You know, yeah. and I was Absolutely. faced with this well, you know, Daniel, I was faced with this last year when I wasn't even sure my son, my son got sober. We, and we decided to kind of do some shifts and some things. We didn't even know where we were going to live. We didn't know anything. I, I at the time was uh, doing what I, I, I was doing my crazy, which is kind of like you're crazy, but a little different, but the same. It's a, you know, it's spirituality gone wild. I don't know if you've heard, but the, in that crazy, you know, we just, so yeah, there were some moments where, and, and people watching me that know me uh, have went through this with me right here live, you know, um, of not knowing where I was going to go, of trusting the universe, of, of listening to the sacred yes, and not even understanding it. Well, it was those moments like in Machu Picchu or in uh, when you were in Peru, where you're like, be, her hearing you're going to move here and you're like, oh, hell no. It's that <laughs> kind of thing. I know. Yeah. And, and, and yet, and yet 
it's really more about you're just that knowingness inside, but you can't get to that knowingness unless you accept the fact that whoever you were before is history and it's gone. okay. And it's gone, dude. Like, but we're, you and I, I'm just sitting here like, wow, I wonder how many more of you are going to start talking about the fact that all of everything has just been stripped away as we step into this new paradigm. Yes. You know, we've been called to the front lines, guys, and this is part of it. It's just realizing that everything here, psh, we're the ones attached to it. If it doesn't matter. I, my kids probably didn't want those two boxes worth of schoolwork that I kept of theirs from the time they were in kindergarten. I know, probably, right? I, but I did. I mean, <laughs> I just, I used to sit, you know, because I'd look at their little handwriting and their, you know. I have my, I have memories, thank God, but that's not the point. They would definitely, it's our attachment and, and the, and to be attached to nothing and allowing flow is, I think that message. Yeah. If I, if I got that yeah. straight. Yeah. Let, let it, yeah. Let it flow. I mean, I, for me, I mean, that's part of getting to a place in life where you don't stress about things anymore. It's like, it'll work itself out. It will work itself out. And until then, I got, I got today, we have today, we have this moment, not guaranteed the next one. So let me live this one to the fullest and not worry about what, you know, whether I'm going to get COVID or not get COVID. I mean, the hell. Let's well, just stay here. Yeah. Stay Let's here. just stay here. Stay here. Stay here. I promise you it's a lot better here than it is anywhere else you might go. Because in the past, you have no power. And in the and in the future you have no power. And the only place you can connect to sources in the now, the only place you can connect to a puppy licking you on the face is in the now. The only place you can feel the wind going through your hair is in the now. So stay here. And I promise you, if you're good, you'll live the next one. And maybe a few more. But you can't bank on it. Because we're not given that ability. We're only given the ability to be present. We're only given the ability to be in the now. And when we choose to be anywhere else, then we're uncomfortable. And then we're scared. And then we have anxiety. And we have depression. And all the things that, that ail us because we can't stay now. We can't stay in the present and enjoying it for whatever it is. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lifelong lesson. I'm okay right where I'm at. Yeah, you are. Okay. Mm. I'm okay right where I'm at. And I think that I think that that should be today's mantra. So you guys can type that in the chat for me. I'm okay right where I'm at. That is definitely the mantra. Let's just take a look at Mika and then, oh, we're already at the hour. Check that out. Um, letting go. I've done it so many times again at this point to let go even more. Should I? Could I? Gathering the power to do away with stuff and hopefully we'll do it by the end of 2020. <laughs> you guys gave me a kick in the ass. I love you, Minka. Burn it, girl. Burn it. Hallelujah. Woo. Look, mine was taken. I didn't even have a choice. Well, actually, I probably did at some point. Like the, the day that I said, yes, it could go into storage, y'all. Okay, so. I yeah. said yes from the get, but it's just letting go of that that no longer serves you and allowing yes. and allowing the beauty that is right right in. And thank you, Ellie. I'm okay where I am. I'm better than okay. I'm okay right where I'm at. I'm okay right where I'm at. I'm okay right where I'm at. You guys get it down and get the groove going with it. I'm okay yeah, right where I'm going. at. Unplug your phone, unplug your phone, unplug your phone. That's all you got to do. I mean, that's like we've answered all the universe's questions today. And I'm so <laughs> grateful. That will be the end of our broadcast for a lifetime. We no longer have any more suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, guys. Uh, Daniel, thank you. So right here, everybody, Catalina Retreat Center, Peru.com. And that you can go ahead and go there, book your book your uh, retreat for the year 2021, I'm guessing. Yep. Well, yeah, we are in, you're not doing it right now, no. COVID, you know, yeah. No, I, am, I have a group coming this Sunday. Oh, well, 
Well, no, I'm not letting no one tell me I can't be in business. I've had two groups. People are like, how'd you do it? I said, I didn't listen to you. I'm open. The land is open. And, and, if, and, and if you don't live in fear, get on the plane and I'll see you. <laughs> I'm right. all about, oh, heck yeah, I do that in a second. I'm not even, oh, gosh, no. I I am I have a fear of what? Fear, no, that's goofy. Got goofy, guys, I'm sorry. Just don't live in fear because it's just, don't turn off. Now, now you really have to unplug your phone. That's just not even, that's not, <laughs> turn that shit off. Seriously, get off the news, get off the stuff. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. I stopped watching news way back in the day. Uh, many, many moons ago, I, I worked with Orangewood Children's Home in Orange County. And I turned off the news back what, then. What, what, what was it in Orange County? Orangewood Children's Home. I used to I used to be a mentor for them. Yeah. For the, for the, and for Project the, Hope. Yeah. Long time ago. Wow. Small world. Yeah. Yeah. Long time ago. Right. We. I went to all the cottages and I with the kids and all of that. I was in the school system there so wow. um yeah we worked with the kids from you know um next door it wasn't lacy it was um the juvenile hall next door and all that but um what was the point i was going to tell you about that there was something i was going to tell you about that but now i forgot <laughs> oh well if it was all that important it would have came out guys i was going to tell it you guys happen. something i was going to tell you something i forget what it was anyway that's probably because we've came at the hour and we definitely do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to end this broadcast, but you all know that I'm going to ask Daniel to come back. This is Catalina retreat center, Peru.com. And then also please go to danielguterres.com, get his book, please watch for the new one to be coming out and for him to be coming back to spirituality gone wild on as much of a regular basis as I can coerce him into. <laughs> I'd love to. Yay. Didn't take much, did it, guys? Gotcha. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. I love you. Thank you for being a wonderful audience today. And we appreciate you. We love you. Go to spiritualitygonewild.com. Join our Untamed Club. And look, it's 22 bucks, and you get all kinds of good, yummy, fun courses and interactive experiences. Mostly you get the tools that you need to actually implement the changes that we've been talking about today. The ones that I talk about without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark. The ones that help you to actually get to that space because you need to start practices. I have listened to thousands and hundreds of books over my lifetime. I mean, everything I could get my hands on from Tony Robbins to Wayne Dyer to Mel Robbins. And what I know is it, it really comes down to what I was willing to do in action and practice. What are my practices? As Daniel talked about going out to the earth and, and touching the soil with his hands and getting that into his being, um, that is a practice. Everything that we do in life, you can choose what your practices are to change your life. And in our Untamed Club, we give you the tools to help you do that. You pick and choose what works. You build your own life experiment because you're your own scientist. You know, you just go in there and does this work, that work, and all that good stuff. That's the end of that. And I love you all. We can say bye now. Bye now. <laughs>